Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthification Chronicles, and oh, this one makes me really sad. You know, things are heating up in August, and uh, not always for the good. You know, I did the video on Terrence Williams, and I played just a little clip of it and everything, but oh, this is, you know, the danger of trying to be connected with Donald Trump. And what's happened is, since Trump retweeted him, He's been getting all kinds of threats, like death threats and threats against his person and everything. So um, I'm going to play the clip. I'm going to play this full thing because I think everybody needs to see it. And if you are on Twitter at all, even if you don't usually post or anything, you need to go on and you need to put in this hashtag, Protect Terrence K. Williams. Make sure that you get it in there and you'll see that it is trending 45.8 thousand tweets have had that hashtag. So we need to get the word out that this is what happens. And this is so stupid. Just because Donald Trump retweeted you and this is what happens to someone, you know, I cannot believe that this is the United States of America and this stuff is happening. I just can't believe it. Even after everything I've seen, this is ridiculous. What's wrong with our American citizens? But anyway, let me play this for you because you got to hear it. And when you're listening to him, keep an eye on this down here because he shows you examples of the kinds of threats he's been getting. It's really sad. So let me play it for you. I need everybody to listen and pay attention. Ever since President Trump retweeted me, people have been sending me death threats, threatening me every single day, telling me I better watch my back. And back in February, when I was on my way to the White House, I was, in, I was involved in a serious car wreck. My driver got into a wreck and I broke my neck and never made it to the White House. So I do not want to be hurt again. So these people need to tone down these death threats and these threats. They need to tone it down. I don't know what to think anymore. And now Facebook is after me. Facebook has sent out their fact checkers to fact check my page. They are telling my followers that my page is fake news, that my content is fake news. They, I, I am a comedian. How can you fact check a joke? I have never in my life heard about Somebody fact checking a joke. What happened to free speech? Please, President Donald Trump, do something about this free speech stuff. They are coming after conservatives and Trump supporters because 2020 is around the corner and they are trying to shut me down. If anything happens to me, y'all, just know somebody on the left did it. Somebody that, that don't like Trump did it, okay? Just know that. And I want to let y'all know right now, I am not suicidal. I have not been having suicidal thoughts. I have not been thinking about committing suicide or hurting others. So, so if they say Terrence committed suicide one day, just know that is fake news. Just know that is a lie because I'm not suicidal. But these people are threatening me and Facebook is coming after me, trying to shut down my page, telling people to go to my page to, fact, uh, to report anything that they feel is fake news. They are trying to shut me down. Isn't that sad? I mean, not just sad, but scary that we have gotten to this place in the United States where merely having the president retweet one of your tweets, you end up getting death threats over it. This is insane. And I can't believe that people can't look at what he produced and laugh at it because he meant it to be funny. It was obviously a joke. I'll tell you, these people on the left have no sense of humor. They really don't. Oh, so anyway, I wanted to bring that to your attention because I think that's very important. You need to share it. If you happen to be on Twitter, you need to make sure that you address this and that you start getting that to trend. Protect Terrence K. Williams. Notice it's not trending anymore. Because by the time I had to do something in between, and so there was a little bit of a gap between the time I recorded before this and recording now, and hmm, it's not trending anymore. And instead, the trending is, look at this, a pitiful 1,706 tweets. That's trending? This was like, what, 45,000 tweets? 
Yeah, I don't think it's not trending anymore just because, oh yeah, look what is trending. And, you know, it's just amazing. They are manipulating this like crazy. And we all need to know. So if you happen to be on Twitter, you know, use this hashtag, hashtag protect Terrence K. Williams, and let's get it up back up there. Let's get it trending again because people need to hear what he has to say. Okay, so then I came across this, and this just came out today. Sarah Carter has this. Google Insider turns over 950 pages of docs and laptop to DOJ. Now, she's talking about the Project Veritas guy, but it's not this guy, okay? You may have seen him, and he was from Google, and he spoke with Project Veritas, but he didn't hide his face or his name or anything. And so, you know, that was one of them. He didn't have anything definite. He says here, I don't have a smoking gun. He said, I've just been coding since I was 10. I have a PhD. I have five years of experience at Google. And I just know how algorithms are. They don't write themselves. We write them to make them do what we want them to do. And I think that is a significant statement there. But he doesn't have anything, you know, definite. However, whoever this person is right here evidently has 950 pages that are definitely something we are going to want to see. Now, Project Veritas is not going to release it until Wednesday, which I'm recording this Tuesday night, so it will probably upload Wednesday morning early. So you will probably see this and look for Project Veritas's release because they will identify who that is. It says he was interviewed in silhouette to conceal his identity. That's how you know it's not this guy. Okay. You know it's not him because he was not in silhouette. And we know who he is. So yeah, there's somebody else. And this person has been interviewed already. We, If you've been watching Project Veritas's videos, yes, there was one other person. And he says that this stuff that's going to come out is really going to expose the bias. There's just not going to be any question. And down here, let me, I'm sorry about scrolling like that. I know that's not comfortable for you, but um, it, it says right here, but when they see what Google has actually written with the documents, this will actually be taught in universities of what totalitarian states can do with this type of capability. It will be so revolting that it doesn't matter what the solution is. A solution will just form as a reaction to this manipulation they have done. So, you know, I hope that's what's going to be the case. And just kind of putting something else out there, Gateway Pundit has this article, and this is about, this came out, I think it was today. Yeah. So on Tuesday, which would be today, the FTC chairman, Joe Simmons, said that breaking up these powerful far left tech companies may be the right remedy to rein them in and restore competition. This is long overdue. And this is what came out on Bloomberg. U.S. Federal Trade Commission is prepared to break up major technology platforms, if necessary, by undoing their past mergers, Chairman Joe Simmons said on Tuesday in an interview to Bloomberg as the agency anti-competitive practices in the sector. Simon said in the interview that breaking up a company is challenging, but could be the right remedy to rein in dominant companies and restore competition. He is leading a broad review of the technology sector to see whether companies, including Facebook, Inc., are harming competition. Could be interesting. Now, I have no idea how in the world you would undo a merger, because mergers themselves are messy enough the way they are. But, wow, undoing mergers... That could be interesting. But anyway, that's a Gateway Pundit article. Here's the top of it. So just the fact that the FTC chairman says that he's prepared to do that, that that's definitely an option on the table, is kind of heartening because I think they're taking it very, very seriously. Okay, and here is the main site for Project Veritas. I'll put the link to it down below. They do have a list here you can sign up for so when their videos come out you'll be informed about them. And so this is kind of where they're at right now. They're trying to get the truth out and it's not popular but that's what it is. Now this is an article that I wanted to share with you. I mentioned it in a previous video 
and I did a little digging on it. So I'm going to mention it and I'm going to share it with you. I'll put the link down below, but I also want to share with you that I'm skeptical about it. I'm not sure that it's actually real. Okay. And it's by the DC Patriot, which is Matt Couch. So, um, this guy, in case you don't know him, his name is David Brock and he is an extreme left person, very left in everything he does. He lives, eats and breathes left. <laughs> okay. And he has some organizations. Now here is a document that it's called Democracy Matters Strategic Plan for Action. This was a memo that was given out to participants in a small kind of secretive group that got together over a period of a few days, right at the same time that our wonderful POTUS was being inaugurated. And so it was leaked and somebody from the Free Beacon picked it up and has posted it so we can, you know, find out what's in it. It's amazing. If you've not read this, you need to read it. It's 49 pages long. Well, and you've got a lot of big pictures and stuff, so it's not all that long. But I've got to tell you, folks, this thing right here, this is a shocker because they have a battle plan that is being implemented. And when you read this, you see the battle plan has been played out for the last two years. And then we are still in the middle of it. So they have a few organizations. The main organization is Media Matters for America. And then they have under that the American Bridge. They have Crew. And remember, Crew was the one that got the Office of Special Counsel interested in investigating Kellyanne Conway for her comments on TV and stuff. So yeah, they were the ones that kicked that off. Share Blue, and this is the one that this document is supposedly from. Now again, I'm going to take it with a grain of salt because I don't doubt that they might put out a document like this, but I can't find that the document came from their website. Okay. Now it could be in some specialized way that maybe, you know, if you logged in, you might be able to see that page. I don't know. I don't know how logins and stuff like that work in regards to whether the page can be seen by people who are not logged in. So, uh, but when you take the link, you get a 404. And like I said, this is an article by um, Matt Couch. But essentially what he says is this was an email that was sent out from Share Blue Stalwarts. And that's who they evidently call their minion Stalwarts. But again, I'm telling you, I'm going to show you in a minute why this could be questionable. Okay. This supposedly gives the plan of attack after Epstein was pronounced dead. And this happened Saturday, August 10th at one o'clock PM. And I believe the announcement of his death came out about eight or eight 30 that morning. So anyway, what it says is we need to get ahead of them. Already the news is being used by far right activists to spread smears and conspiracy theories on social Despite being both harmful and untrue, there's clearly a very concerted effort from the right to reach the public consciousness. So as you can see on your dash, and there's a dashboard, if you look at this, see it has a dashboard supposedly in link. But again, you type in this link and you get a 404 error. You don't see anything. So, um, and we need to have these, as you can see on your dash, the past few hours have seen a rapid swell in far right disinformation. No, it was far right truth. Well, it wasn't even far right. It was just truth being put out there by everybody. They were saying, Hmm, there's something wrong with this picture. So this is supposed to be the page that it comes from, not necessarily this particular document, but it's supposed to be this page with all these talking points. Again, when you take that link, you get a 404. So I cannot verify that's where it came from. Why am I telling you then if I can't verify? Because I think it's important to be informed about what's out there and also the validity of it. So when somebody presents this to you and they say, oh, look at this, you don't jump off and say, oh, it's true. It's got to be true. Okay. So take it with a grain of salt. If somebody presents this to you and assumes that it's true, you know, question that. I don't know that it is. I wouldn't share it around because I just don't have the validity to it. 
And anyway, they're saying, you know, don't deny the possibility of foul play. Don't excuse Epstein of his potential crimes or doubt the validity of his guilt. Don't link to the current court documents regarding Epstein or use them in constructing your argument. <laughs> I think that one's kind of funny. <laughs> it, I could see him doing that. I could see him. They don't want you to read the actual court documents. You know, it's like what I do. I find real documents and people don't want you reading real documents because the real documents will tell you the truth. Anyway, and then do sympathize with the potential victims of Epstein. They have to tell them that, okay? You know, I sympathize with those people, but nobody has to tell me that because that's just a natural response if you're a human being. But you have to tell them that. Anyway, and then they says, remind people of the prior allegations against President Trump. And you have seen this. So I've watched some of these things happen. Now, again, I can't say if this was a document that was sent out to them as their marching orders. I can't tell you that. But I can tell you that this was happening. And it's still happening. They're trying to tie it to Trump any way they can. And talk subject 14C, if this is a valid document... That's a scary thought right there because they've got all these talking points and they have them all written down for their little robots to go and, you know, spout them out somewhere else. So that's what this says. And, you know, remind people the power that the president of the United States holds in comparison to members of the public. Uh, yeah, you have to be reminded of that. I'm I don't need to be reminded of that. I voted him in and I knew what power I was giving him and he's answerable to me because of that power. And I think he's been doing an awfully good job. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you. And the reason I think it is questionable, like I said, it's Matt Couch who put it out there on this website. So um, the reason I'm hesitant to believe it is because I went to 4chan on it and 4chan pretty much the consensus with the Anons there is that it is bogus. Okay. And it was put out there by a shill. So that's what we're saying. And, uh, down here, you know, it says they went to the web archive and they couldn't find it. It didn't show anything. It never existed. And the term stalwarts, just not a term that's been used. It's not trending on Google. There's no real statistics there. So that's what I'm saying, okay? But I do want you to be aware of the document because there actually is an organization called ShareBlue that this document is authentic, okay? And I will put the link to that down below. I'll put the link to this one too, this article. But be careful about sharing it because, you know, I want you to be aware that it's out there because people will be sharing it. I don't want you just to jump on board and assume it's true. All right. So anyway, that's what I've got for you on this one. I want to thank you for stopping by and I'll see y'all later. Bye.